Hey heroes, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Today, we're starting up a new series, Thea 2. Sound familiar? Well, this game actually came out in 2019, and I think when I saw it, I was very interested, but was thrown off by the Hearthstone Magic the Gathering style combat system. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Magic the Gathering. Heck, I have a huge trunk at home with a couple hundred dollars worth of cards in it. But when I play RPG strategy games, I don't want that to be the form of combat. But enough talking, let's get into the game. So other than the multitude of zombie games that I play, I also love RPG roguelikes with a deck building system. So we're talking about Wilder Myth, Curious Expedition, and Trials of Fire. Thea 2 adds 4x, which you're aware of from games like Civilization or Stellaris. So explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. We're going to explore the map, build a village, gather natural resources for crafting, and destroy anyone that won't be our friends. All of this with a Slavic myth theme. So when you start off a new game, you get to choose your god. The, because you're going to be a chosen, uh, a, the, the champion of a god. And uh, we start off the game with uh, Sparog and who was the other person? Um, Sparog and someone, oh, and uh, Zoria. These two gods were our initial gods. And as you can see, uh, we can unlock, there's god points in this game, which is the form of currency that you use to unlock things to make your game experience better or newer or fresher. So uh, as I've played quite a bit of this game, about 25 plus hours in a week. <laughs> and uh, I love this game. This this is could be, I'd say for me, almost a perfect game except for, which I'm going to show you, the combat, which I don't particularly like. But there's a way around it, which makes it fun then for me. So I'm not going to show you Sparog, which he's kind of like a, kind of like a fighty good. He's kind of like, you know, a Zeus-ish, or more like Hephaestus, uh, a good, a good, a good fighting god. Whereas uh, Zoria, you could say is kind of like a fighty, magical type of, of god. Uh, but today, I think think I am going to go with you know what zombies so let's go with Nia forgotten abandoned diminished alone for centuries I was but a mere memory nay not even that but the lady of winter is no more the master of the underworlds is gone and finally I take my place once more mistress of death bringer of sorrow keeper of solace and demise only I can traverse the lands of the dead the Navias, only I can carry the souls of the faithful to their homes and peace. Yet it is not a service well received. I do not mourn for the dead. I do not weep for the dying. It is all as it should be, as it was made to be. And sometimes when the laws are broken, death will be served by my hand. I have suffered in the darkness. Now I bring suffering and its end infinitely. Join me. Why would you, fool? So, um, each god has their own special ability. This this god, uh, if I die, I can turn into an unliving corpse. Why that's important is, if your main character dies, then if you have no resources to resurrect them, the game ends and there's permadeath. But you'll gain god points at the end. But this character or this god allows me to resurrect if somehow I don't have the resources to, which is great. Uh, we start off with the domains of magic, nature, and intellect. So that's that's like the theme of this god. The theme is about magic, uh, nature, and intellect. And uh, we have three neutral domains. So let's take a look at what that's about. So any of these ones with blue means that these have been already unlocked. And I haven't really spent too, mu too many of my god points uh, unlocking these bonuses because I'm trying to unlock all the gods first to see which one I like first or just just for different play styles. So we slot in uh, six bonuses up to six bonuses every game and it will change the way we play. So this slot here requires me to use a nature uh, bonus. So as you can see there are a few tabs here. Some I've unlocked, some I haven't. So 
uh, it, it has to be in nature in this lot. It has to be magic. It has to be intellect. And these can be uh, these non, these uh, just generic ones. So in terms of nature, I only have a giant spider and a hunter option. And we're going to go with the hunter. And as you can see, uh, we can only have a certain amount of, 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 of traits, trait costs and people. Uh, in, in our parties, our starting party. So let's see, we need a magical one. And I think we only have we only have the one. So we're gonna have a hunter and a scavenger. And the last one is gonna have to be this. So we have a scoundrel and a rat. Okay, so now we get to add three uh, standard bonuses. We can add another scoundrel. Nope. Uh, you know what we're going to do? We're going to add a warrior for sure. So we have kind of like a uh, tanky, ranged. Scavenger is kind of like a mix, a hybrid. And a scoundrel is kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a thief, but not really either. <laughs> it's more like a craftsman actually. So now the question is, what am I going to fill in these two fields? I can add two advanced pieces of equipment. That might be helpful. Food, or maybe crow's gems. Um, I think we're gonna go for hidden gems. The crow is a pet, which I'm gonna give to my hunter. The crow gives usually perception, and hunters are based their um, damage is based off that. And then I'm gonna go for two advanced pieces of equipment. Hopefully, one of my four, technically five guys, are gonna be able to use that. So let's start the game. So when you start off the game, you have to choose which character is going to be your chosen, your champion, the person that technically can't die. Uh, so we got our hunter, we got the scavenger, we got a scoundrel, you can even be the rat if you want, and the warrior. Oh, something I didn't mention was that uh, there are, a, because this game is kind of, old, kind of old, there's a lot of mods for the game. So I've added a ton of mods, one of them being character portraits. Uh, the normal game doesn't have this many character portraits, but I, that is so important to me, having a good character portrait. So, um, I think I'm going to be the, I'm going to choose a hunter. I can choose between male or female. We'll go male. And let's try to find a portrait that I identify with. Ooh, look at that. That looks kind of familiar, huh? Uh, let's see. I like that. Okay. Vincent. So now we get to choose what type of world shape, whether it's, 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 it's a collection of islands with a, their own separate biomes, uh, a Pangea, which is one big landmass, uh, and then we get to choose the world sizes, whether we want small, medium, or large. I'm going to go for islands, and we're going to go for a... Not too sure about going medium. I kind of like small. I like small worlds, but let's let's do medium islands this time. Well, hello there, chosen. Welcome into the service of the gods. Indeed. I okay, I'm just gonna up. skip that. So, so that's a lot of talking, and the guy kind of talked a little bit too slow for for us. Basically, he gave us a seed, which will allow us to make a village. And um, he gave us some wood, some fruit, some research points, and experience points. Let's quickly talk about that. Uh, there's going to be a ton of resources because this is a 4x type of game. So uh, wood can be used for various things, including camping, which will help us regenerate our health and our stats or our resources. Uh, we're going to need to feed ourselves. So there will actually be crafting recipes for the food that we get. So fruit being one of them. And as you can see, uh, there are better times to gather fruit, kind of like logically, spring and summer. Uh, there are research points there. Once again, 4x means that we're, there's a research tree. I'll show you that in a second. And there's experience points. Our characters are going to gain experience and level them up. Let's quickly look at the at the uh, research tree. I went a little too fast for that. Let me just change something. Okay, the music was a little bit too loud. So let's talk about research, which is in this option in the top right here. And as you can see, there's not one 
craft one research tree. There's technically four. One for one for resources, one for equipment, food, and buildings. I usually go for food first because all we know right now is sweet meat recipes. And as you can see, there's primary and secondary ingredients, which we'll talk about when we get to it. But basically, it, it focuses on the primary uh, ingredient, which is going to require the most, is meat. And meat isn't always plentiful. Uh, where, but then you got the op you got opposites like say you're role playing. Hey, we're vegans, you know, or vegetarians. You can have a vegetarian choice, which only requires vegetarian food. Hey, I like sweets, so maybe I'm gonna go for grandma's treats. We can learn them all, and uh, it'll give us more options to to eat. And actually, we get morale bonuses the we're, for all the different types of things we can eat. So we're all we're kind of like foodies as well. We like variety. Okay, so here is my party. A few different options, but the game is about exploration, and let's turn this on. So let's move right here. Ooh, this is a great starting spot. So over here, it tells us how, how big our, our party is right now. We have a big party. Uh, how much uh, movement points our party has. Uh, depending on the terrain, some terrains like this forest is gonna cost me more to move through. Uh, whereas the planes like this only requires like one movement point. There are, as you see, I've, I've toggled it on and off. Um, I, I've toggled on the resources. So when you build a village or you camp, you will be able to gather resources. Uh, so as you can see, we have fruit, grain, wood, and scaled leather. As you can see, scaled leather is grayed out because that is a higher tier uh, resource. So as you can see, we know these basic ones in this inner circle here, leather, iron, sandstone, and so forth. And then we can spend our advancement points or technically research points to research new things. So if I select scaled leather, I would be able to gather that type of resource. Otherwise I can't gather it. I, I just don't know how to. Uh, taking a look at the other trees quickly, the equipment trees will help me uh, be able to build equipment. One of the most important things I'm going to go for first is armors, but not right now. I want to see what type of food sources I have first. And then there's buildings and rituals. This will allow us, uh, as I said in this game, we'll be able to build a village, our own village, and then we'll have our team. It's kind of like Heroes of Might and Magic in that way, in that you have your castle, and your castle can get attacked, but you could also build build buildings in it and get your uh, also have people there gathering resources so let's get, go back to the game and tell you why I ood because when you camp as an option it will allow you to gather one tile away from your spot uh, and let me show you where you are where we are right here we're right here so this is our camp we get to gather the on the spot that we're on plus one adjacent uh, uh, tile away, which is this one right here and this one right here. This is two tiles away, and also we don't once again we don't know how to gather scaled leather, but once again it's a higher level resource which we'll talk about later. So back to this, let's go to gathering. So this is the gathering screen. Each character has their own skills, and let me maybe show you that right here. This is my entire party right now. We can have an extremely huge party. I absolutely love that. It's not static. Uh, so here, here, I'm at, here I am. And as you can see, I have a perception. I'm a high perception character right now. And, I've, and I have a bone bow that I have equipped. And if you look in the bottom, it shows me uh, it is a red skill or a combat skill. And is the damage is based off my perception the eye symbol so here's eye and here's an eye symbol so it does my perception times 1.2 so I should be using perception based things so uh, what I'd like is uh, if you guys can in between or in, in the comments below comment your name for a character uh, you can't really pick a pick a person, but we have one male, two male. He could be a we could we can name the rat. Uh, I think this is a female. That's being right. Yeah, we have one female. You wouldn't know it. Okay, <laughs> pretty cool actually. So 
Uh, if you want to be in... Oh, we actually have two. We have two people here. We'll go like this. We have Bedghost. We have Bog. We have Branca. We have Bud. We have me. Uh, Mulge. And we have a rat. So if you want to be in my game, uh, leave a comment below of the name. If As long as it's appropriate, I'm going to put you into my game. Uh, so let us... Uh, here's our equipment that hasn't been assigned. I'm going to assign the crow to me. And let's see. So just as a recap right here, we have our crafter here with high wisdom. So these are considered primary stats, usually strength, intelligence, mysticism. Technically, perception is a primary. Actually, it's a secondary physical attribute. But um, for uh, the hunters, which rely on bows, that's the, that's the primary stat you want. So we have our crafter here, and they're going to have, have high wisdom, and they're going to have high crafting skill. We have scoundrels, which as you can see has high wisdom and high intelligence, which makes sense, you know. Thieves typically have high intelligence, not typically high wisdom, but um, let's see. And uh, average skills across the board, maybe higher luck. Luck affects in, uh, experience gain. Uh, here's a warrior here. So warriors, obviously high strength. She has a iron sword, which we're actually going to change with the bone hatchet. Because I know off the bat, um, hatchets do more damage than swords. But swords, so that's the thing I really love about this game. Every weapon is different and, and there's a reason to using different weapons. So swords, while they do less damage than say a hatchet of the same-ish level, um, the swords give an increase to shielding. So if you use a shield and a sword, that works out really well. That's, that's a great combination. Uh, but I want her to do more damage. So I'm going to give her this bone hatchet. And let's see, maybe... Let's see, Betagos. So now we also have two other advanced items. We have a Topaz Codex and a Scaled Codex. And you can tell the strength by, if, if you look underneath where it says skills and it says weapon, it, it, it has this bar. And the further the bar is to the, that is filled, it means this technically the stronger level it is. Uh, so let's see. Books are typically good for people with high primary um, skills of intelligence and mysticism. So that is not you. Uh, that's kind of you. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to give you this. And let's see, Moog. So the scavenger should have higher gathering. Not really, but uh, scavenger is kind of like a mishmash of everything. Technically higher mysticism and intelligence. So he's using a wand, which kind of makes sense. Uh, let's see. Oh, this guy also has higher perception as well. Ooh. Maybe, you know what? I'm going to give the bird to Bud so that we can balance the perception since they're both using ranged. He's using an amber crossbow while I'm using a bone bow. Okay, so I've spent enough time there. Let's go into gathering. Uh, this first episode, as you can see, we're not going to do very much. I'm just teaching you the game and once we're deeper it, it'll go much faster so everyone has their own crafting crafting skill um, it's, it, it always arranges it uh, or you could do it differently but uh, it shows here bud has the highest crafting skill while my rat has the least um, over here these are the different things that we can gather and uh, <clears throat> this thing tells you when you gather it's gonna give you 20 20 grain and we have zero right now. It'll gather 10 fruit. We have 18 right now. It'll get us six wood. We have 15 right now. Over here, it tells us our progress of how much we've collected. And you, and um, that tells you how much skill you need to gather in one turn. So if we have a combination of 180 grain in one turn, um, we're gonna get the 20 grain. So I'm gonna use Bud here. I'll use, let's see, you here, and my wood, I need 100, so my next strongest guy. Next strongest guy. So that'll be two turns. And let's see, next strongest guy. There we go, perfect. And the rat, 
The rat, we can assign the rat to do other things like crafting, like cooking, uh, researching, or even do rituals. But right now we don't really need anything. Maybe cooking. Let's see what type of cooking recipes we have. We do have some cooking recipes. So remember, we started off with some meat and some fruit, and we only know sweet meat recipes right now. So if I slot in the primary material and the secondary material, I can um, cook roladas. A roulada is a nice chunk of meat rolled with veggies, herbs, or anything else you found and baked. Okay, so I'll do that, and I'll assign my rat to cook, which I know doesn't make sense. So it's a turn-based game. Our turn so, is done. as tradition has it, your god sent me to guide your first steps on this new and bewildering right next to the mini So this is just the tutorial right now, and I'm just going to skip it entirely. Whenever you encounter any of these events, you're going to gain usually some research points and some experience points. Um, the experience points is divided among all your party, and your research points, um, actually I'll show it to you right here, see, it says here, we're four out of eight, meaning that once we get a full eight points of uh, research points, it'll give us an advancement point, which as we see we have one right now, which we, you can save up. So the turn is done. On the right hand side, you'll see all the different changes or things that happened. Uh, we had, if we take a look at the gathering, as you can see, we have 69 plus 25 equaling 94 skill, meaning that once per turn, we're gonna be able to get 10 fruit. Now we have 24. Uh, if you remember last turn, we didn't have enough skill, 82 and 44, 126. Uh, but this next turn, we're going to be able to get the grains that we need. Same thing with the wood. <clears throat> so so what I meant to say was that there's carryover of skill. So if you don't, if you have too much skill, you will, it'll carry over into the next uh, gathering phase. And if you Yummy. double it, well then you'll be able to get here, double the resources. Have a good drink too. Now, the same way you cooked, so this guy is happy that you know how to cook or gather resources. He gives us more research points, experience points, and he gave us some nut tincture, which is a drink. So let's talk about that actually. Um, group info. There's, for me, this was really hard at the very beginning and it might be for you. Hopefully this video will help you if you buy this game, help you understand the game a little bit better. But uh, you can manage your food and your fuels. So you need the fuel to be able to camp and um, to do certain activities like I believe cooking or possibly um, crafting. Uh, there's food. So the more food options you have, the higher your morale will be. But you'll be but you might not want to eat your raw food because you want to use that for cooking. But uh, as you see here, we only have one type of uh, non raw food. So so we, so we want to, to eat all the different foods, but you can restrict it later on. Like m m later on, we might find stronger levels of wood and we don't want to burn good wood when we could just use basic wood for it. Okay, so I'm going to gather one more turn, I think. Let me just double check. Yep. So now we're good. We're gonna break camp. And as you can see, uh, what, what we may not have noticed was that we've gained a lot of food. So we can last 20 turns before we run out of food. Uh, we also have 24 days worth of wood. So let's actually head south. As you can see, one movement point, two movement point, three. We'll go right here. And as you can see, this symbol here, this blue symbol pointing down here, means that there's an event here for us. So let's go here. As you scour some old ruins for loot, you notice you're not the first to arrive. The other group does not see you yet, but this may change at any moment. <clears throat> so, you, kind of like my Trials of Fire game, there's lots of different options that y you can do. We can attack these people. Uh, it's going to be based off our red cards, which is kind of like our attack cards. We can investigate, or we can leave. So, I'm going to... What type of character did I pick? I forgot. We picked a, ma a nature, magic, and intellect. So technically we're not the strongest on attack, but let's give it a try because I want to show you what combat's like. We have two options whenever we choose, choose an option. We can just go into combat 
We can auto resolve or we can forfeit. If we forfeit, something bad could happen or, or not, but usually it's better than resolving or doing the actual combat and losing entirely. We can auto resolve and based on your your characters and your skills and your equipment and all your stuff, uh, it'll tell you whether you have a perfect victory all the way to total defeat. But I'm gonna show you, I, and the thing is, I play this game mostly by auto resolving because like I said, I don't particularly like this form of combat or the way that you do combat. And maybe a lot of people like that. So you'll have to tell me in the comments if you want to see me do this each time. It, it'll, it'll unfortunately really slow down the game, but maybe that's what you want. Um, and I'm fine with doing what the people want. So we are going to not resolve it and we're going to resolve this manually and I'm going to show you what combat looks like. So this is combat. Uh, it's a hearthstone, I would say, more like a hearthstone style in that um, the first player goes and they get one mana and then the next and the next player goes but they get two mana and then, and it goes further and further. Um, what you also need to know about this is that the sooner that you act in combat, the uh, sooner that your action triggers. So if you if you use a, a skill here and you use the same skill over here, the skill that you use right here will trigger first rather than this one because it will be seven seven seconds later. And as you can see, our enemy has already gone. Uh, he's going to do a wand attack, which is a ranged attack. Uh, let's see if I go further he did this so this is a single target ranged attack doing nine damage which is crazy <laughs> uh, it'll be able to attack anyone uh, place uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. ranged so it's gonna attack someone in the melee ro row in front okay so let's see a wand okay so now it's my turn so here are my characters I need something to attack fast. So if I, so what I'm doing is I could I could zoom in, but what I'm doing right now is I'm mainly looking at um, this this number right here to see what's faster. Maybe I can attack a little faster and kill this guy before before he gets to go. I think what I'm going to do is I am going to use this girl. And I, I can choose to apply shields to one or two friendly targets. I can throw a poison dagger because that's one of her innate skills. Or I can do a weapon attack. Each one has its own speed. Obviously, the poison throwing dagger is really fast. But it only does 35% more damage if the target has less than full health. So you want to damage it first. But I'm going to do a high damage uh, kind of fast attack. It'll be faster than, than this guy. So it should be like 10 point something seconds. And as you see, she has 10 health, 29, um, or 10 armor, 29 health. And as you can see, her, her attack will go first. So if we can kill this guy first, um, he might not be able to use his attack. So let's see what other ability we can do. Eleven. Let's see. I think I will go and attack two. And I'm going to do this. So my two, my two uh, points or mana is gone. I can always forfeit or I can resolve, but that is not a good option. <laughs> so now the opponent gets two two options. Okay, good. So the boar is going to get to attack first. So let's put uh, probably. I want another fast attacker. 11 seconds. Um, we only have one melee person, really. You know what? I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. The reason why I don't want to do that is once you use a character, the cost increases by one. So, and I only have two mana right now. I kind of want to get someone else out there really quickly. Let's see, what, what ability does she have? She has a ranged ability too. 
She has a ton of abilities, actually. Um, random blast. I can randomly attack two targets for four damage. That's not bad. Or I can ranged and stun one person for ten seconds. That's not bad. Let's do that. There we go. And let's put in our tanky guy. He could shield someone, but I think he'll just tank. He'll absorb the damage from the boar. Okay, and our turn's done. Combat will actually start once we get past the, the, the seventh turn. So here's the other character. Oh boy, he is going to go ranged, it looks like. He's doing a ranged attack and probably going to attack this guy as well. So why don't we spend one of our other guys... Who has a shield ability? Uh, let's see, who has a shield? I think it was... I'm going to use my own boar as well. Why can't he do that? I'm going to place him here. Any summons seem to go first. So what I'm trying to so as so what as you can see what I'm trying to do is we're gonna block this boar and then these guys are going to target we're gonna to try to uh, burn down this guy first. And I have only one more point left, which means I can only use a rat or this guy. Let's see, these guys don't have any good skills. Okay, that's perfect. Enemy turn. Uh oh. So as you so as you can see, um, this symbol here, duplicate, means that this character is being used twice, which means that they can use their ability twice if it's good or it's something something's good about it. But it also means that they're on the board for longer, meaning that they could die faster. So I have one more skill point. I could throw out my rat. I don't know if that's worth it. I think. I'll do this. Hopefully that works. So time to see what everything we just did, what, what happens. Most mostly the combat's automated at this point. So we'll go from the very top. The first boar goes. He does three damage to my armor, nothing. My boar attacks deals three damage to him and then I get to shoot I, I, got, I, I get to shoot someone uh, in the melee row I'm gonna shoot these guys or this guy so nine damage he's almost dead uh, the melee guy attacked that guy now we get this other ranged we're gonna shoot this guy we're gonna keep there we go, that guy's dead. So now he doesn't get to, to do any more moves. So his duplicate was kind of a waste. Now, we got this range. We're gonna keep targeting this guy. Seven, he's almost dead. He's almost dead. Very nice. He did nine damage. And now, if the battle's not done, then he's gonna redo the entire thing again. So the boar attacked, that guy's dead now. And now this boar is left. And that's combat. So we obviously, you know, like I did it and it wasn't in a way it wasn't that hard, but it's very slow. So let me know in the comments whether you want to see me do this each time, whether you want to see me do combat and placing the cards each time. I don't mind doing it, but the way I've played the past 25 hours is I just auto resolve because it's just faster so I can experience more of the game. But I, I, I totally don't mind. You, you just let me know in the comments below what you want to see. So it says your decisive attack destroys the enemy while you did not notice a small group taking off with what they looted here. Still, you are free to continue searching the ruins. So we got a wooden wand and we got some coal. Coal is, is, a form, is another form of fuel, it's not used for anything else in the game. Which kind of sounds bad, but that means that you can dedicate coal for fuel while you can save wood for actual crafting. So now we get the choice. We get to choose whether we check the west side, south side, east side of this old ruins for loot. And it's all randomized. I haven't memorized what they do yet. I think if you memorize it, you might 
get some good gear, but um, I think it's also random. So let's go east. Bad. <laughs> you enter the eastern part of the ruins and find that a deep, nasty gash has been torn in the ground beneath you. From within, you sense a presence, watching, waiting. You feel a glow that seems pleasant at first, then becomes stifling, hot, and burning. So Mulch uh, has a now a spiritual curse, decreasing his destiny and mysticism. And I think that's his main stat. The rat, the rat has also a spiritual curse. So now we can stay and fight this thing. Um, let's try to stay and fight this thing. And we can also once again fight it, and we will use a different set of cards to do it. But I'm going to try to auto-resolve it. And it has a victory with injury, so I'll take that. And see, that's how much faster it is, rather than that entire 10, 15... I don't even know how long that took, 10, 15 minutes. But is either 5 seconds or 10 minutes. So you let me know in the comments below whether you want auto-resolving or... Uh, uh, do the full combat, or maybe a mix, you know, maybe one or two per episode. You let me know. Your spirit is strong and pushes away the burning light that threatened to devour your soul. At least now, you can loot the ruins in peace, although you remain shaken by the experience. So one of our three uh, health meters, I guess you could say, is health, sanity, and faith. Faith being the moon, sanity being the, the yellow circle, and obviously health is the heart. So if you lose all your health, or even if you get to a low amount of health, you have a chance of dying. It's not just zero health, you're dead. If you, I think if you have low health, there's a chance that you can die. So you got to be careful. Oh, so our max faith has increased, which is always a good thing. But we did take some faith damage. But that's okay. So we're going to search the ruins and leave. So we got some more coal, and we got a bone wand. We got some research points. We got some experience points. So that event is done. And we stopped. So we have an option now. We can move down one more. And I think that's what I'll do. And I'm gonna I'm gonna camp here. And we have the option to go for fish and, fish and fruit. Let's see. Let's see if we can get it in one turn. Yes, we have enough for one turn. But only two turns for fruit. So one turn. So as you can see here, we gained a research point, or an advancement point right here. And we gained some fish to add to our food supply. And uh, as you can see here, two guys have, have leveled up. So my guy leveled up. And you get to choose three different stats or items or skills to level up. And Destiny is a secondary ability which affects gathering, crafting, research, rituals, luck, faith, intelligence, or mysticism. At the beginning of the game, I feel like uh, physical abilities, the red, is very important. You need it to kill everything. But then, mid and end game, these yellow and purple skills are very important. Like, without them, <laughs> you can't win the game, I feel, from my limited experience. So this is okay. It's not great for the beginning, but it's okay. I'll, I'll go with Destiny. Bog uh, is our scoundrel with already high wits. So more wits is not bad. Or we can choose from lesser. So the first option will always give you two. The second option will always give you one. And so it's a choice between do you want something that gives you more stats overall? Or do you want to go for uh, a advancement through something that you need so maybe say maybe for bog uh although she might want wisdom um because it's her kind of a class class skill that she wants maybe she wants more strength because she wants to carry more stuff maybe wear heavy heavier armor but we're gonna go with uh the the the, the plus two right now that might not always be the case so turn is done. I'm going to spend another turn gathering so that we can at least get some fruit at least once. There we go. We got 24 days of food. Now let's uncamp and let's move up. Oh, ooh. So this is a camp. And uh, from my experience, this is a bad place to go. These guys are very strong, light bringers. 
So uh, we need, I believe, yellow or purple skills, which we do not have. So I'm moving away from them. And um, I don't see any any uh, reason not to camp at the end of your turn if you can't do anything. So I'm going to camp. I can't gain grain, but I can get some wood. And, uh, oh, one thing. A lot, there's so much, so much information on the screen. It takes so much to learn it all. But see, as you can see, there's a day cycle. Uh, there's a day and night cycle. Different things happen. So as you can see, day provides better visibility so we can see further. Roaming monsters are also less aggressive. At nighttime, you can't see as far. Roaming monsters are more aggressive. There is a god. If you remember when I was going through the gods, one of the gods is kind of like a werewolf god. So it's actually reversed. He, they're better during night and worse during the day. Um, there's also a season cycle. So we start off in summer and we get added ex experience each turn uh, if, if, if you're gathering. So we kind of want everyone gathering all the time during summer. And then when it changes, uh, uh, like say to fall, it will uh, give us a different bonus, which is should be crafting, plus 25% to crafting. 31 more turns until it turns from summer to, to, to fall. Let's end the turn here. A couple of your folk found themselves a child in the cabbage patch. So, <laughs> Kinson and Molj was having fun and they found Pavel. Doesn't look like that. Okay, so we rejoice. So, random event that happened in the game. We now have a child added to our party. Here's Pavel, and uh, Pavel will gain experience just like everyone else um, in, let's see, I forgot where I have to find it. Where's the attributes? Here, I think, right? Child growing up, right here. So I can't tell, I can't tell how long it takes, oh, 45 turns, top right. So in 45 turns, we're going to give this child an option to pick a profession. And it's kind of based off the stats that they're going to gain. So, you know, that's just... In 45 turns, we'll see what happens. So let's see, do we want to give this child anything? And we'll give you this. Maybe this. <laughs> Maybe a book. Read a book. Um, oh, by the way, do we have better, better wands? I think these wands are... Oh, actually, this wand's better, isn't it? This wand's better, so let's switch out that wand. Anyone else using secondary skills? Not you, not you, not really you, not you, okay. So let's level up some guys. Mulj, uh, he is already high in intelligence, so that's good. More intelligence is always good. As you can see here, wits uh, determines how fast a character can act during a challenge. And then our scavenger, which are, which are our other archer-ish person, We'll give you perception. There we go. And I think we're gonna camp, right? So the last thing we're gonna do this, this, I know we're only on turn eight. We're gonna go to this event over here. The ruins you're about to search have an unsettling stench of death about them. So we got some options, scout the area first, search the ruins carefully or leave. We are going to scout the area first, since we have guys with perception, makes sense that might be worth it. You observe the quiet remains of a once great city and soon realize that among the fog walk the unliving and their breath is exuding toxic cloud. So, so we have a few different options and you'll notice that either the cards are filled in or they're kind of empty. And what that means is the challenge is based off either your innate skills or your innate skills plus your equipment. If it's your innate skills plus your equipment, it'll be a filled in card. If it's if it's an empty card, it's based off just your innate skill. So this is just based off our innate physical skills. This one's based off just our innate sanity skills or intellect skills. Um, if we look at our group, let's see, our, our team has high perception, high secondary skills and I think we're also high in the yellow skills. If you look here, six and three. Uh, oh, actually, no, we're, we're actually really good with, with physical. We're really good with physical right here. 
um, and then high yellows and high yellows. We're just low in mist systems, so we should try to avoid. We actually have one more person. Uh, we should try to avoid doing purple challenges. So we're gonna do use the element of surprise and attack once again. Do we want to fight slowly or do we want to auto resolve? I just want to auto resolve, and this time we get a perfect victory. We'll accept the outcome, or maybe I don't like what the auto resolve is telling me. I can resolve it manually, but I'm not doing that. So, the unliving lie er debtor, and you're free to loot the ruins in peace. So we got some bones, makes sense. Normal bones, but as you can see, we got shadow bones. This is a higher tier uh, loot. We got a buff, physical blessing. So we got more health and increased the movement points, which is fantastic. And then uh, we also got some mental blessing. So our wisdom and intelligence is higher. So we might be better off doing some um, wisdom checks uh, in the near in the near future. Uh, top top right of the box for three turns. So we're gonna search the ruins. We got a golden mallet, which is fantastic. It's a two, I think that's a two-handed weapon per the two hands, top right, and it does a lot of damage. It might not be better than the hatchet though that we're using. Uh, what's special about mallets is that it has a T attack, meaning it has splash attack, which is good against enemies that 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 uh, swarm you. We got uh, a tier two-ish, what I like to call tier two stone. We also got some crafting tools. We can equip one crafting tool per character and it'll give a different buff. This one will increase our crafting. So we got some research points and experience points. So let's quickly look at our gear. We have two more movement points, which is enough to move left. Let's set camp. And now, if you remember, uh, we got crafting tool, so increase crafting. So this guy most likely, because he has the anvil system, meaning he's a craftsman, means that he probably starts off with the highest crafting, which is 12. If we look at all our other characters, I'm looking right here, no one has anywhere close to as much crafting. So I'm gonna give him even more crafting. So he's fantastic. Or I could always give it to someone else to bounce the crafting off. Uh, so let's take a look at the weapons here. Our strongest uh, strength person is this person, Branca, uh, but it'll do... So hammers are also slow, while hatchets or axes are the fastest. The fastest and the highest damage, which you say, why doesn't everyone use hatchets? It's because mallets, while they're slow, they deal good damage or high damage and they can do splash damage. So that might be a reason why you use mallets over hatchets or over swords so I like the right now we need as much defense as we can have so I'm gonna stick with the Bronco with the hatchet and the shield and I think we're good with the wands right good with the wands okay oh and uh, with that done let's set some people to gathering we will do that let's see if we can uh, cook right now We can cook. Uh, let's see. We got some fish. We got some this. So we'll do some fish and berries. Once again, we've got the rouladas. And you know what? I'm going to save this as a favorite so I can quickly select it as an option. And then, no, look at this. I can use this meat instead and berries. And instead of getting that roulada, we can make fish cakes. So that's, that's what I really love about this game is that, yes, you need meat and berries or maybe a spice, but changing the primary material changes the the recipe so we can make fish cakes okay now we have to make them it only requires 50 uh crafting and as you can see some people are really good some people are horrible at it so i'm gonna do uh this and i'm gonna stack them up there this guy here too so as you can see here we have 172 skill versus 42. So it's going to take two turns to make one fish cake. Whereas here we have, we have, th we're going to make three batches basically. So 172 divided by 50, which is basically three, three point something. We're going to make three batches of roladas, which technically we don't have the materials to do it. We can only make two batches. 
but it's gonna te technically if we had the resources we'd make 36 roladas in one turn but we're only gonna make one so let's make make that turn go and as you can see we made 24 once again we don't have that extra meat but we do have more food so our guys leveled up so Bronca we have we can give you two perception which of which is a physical attribute or we can give you strength and I think I'm gonna just for this character I'm gonna give you we're gonna go strength all the way bed ghost uh, more crafting is fantastic okay and that's just another turn and we are gonna there's a um, Theodore wants us to go to some uh, house abandoned house where you can go beeline the main quest or you can explore and do whatever the heck you like and as you can see there's a ton of different things to do but I'm gonna stop the video right here it's getting a little bit long but thank you very much for joining me today once again in the comments below let me know uh, leave your a character name preferably male or female if that matters to you and uh, as long as it's appropriate I will put your name in the game uh, for one of the characters once again let me just show you off the characters we, we can even name the rat let me know what name the rat should be uh, then also let me know in the comments below what you want to see do you want to see me do these challenges by hand and separately slowly do these challenges once again they'll take anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes even if I go fast and memorize what everything does it'll take 10 to 15 minutes per combat or I can auto resolve all the challenges and it'll be much faster way way faster or I could always do a mishmash. You can say, hey, Jonathan, I want to see one or two challenges per episode. And I'll, I'll do that too. You know, but if no one says anything, I'm just going to auto resolve because I, I, I can show you more that way. But uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Check out the rest of my channel for other videos on video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.